In our next Integrative Hermetic Health Show, we take a careful, focused look at one of the major changes in the consumer food industry. The following is an excerpt from the beginning of our latest program, Was Milk Ever the Perfect Food? Good morning, doctor. How are you doing? Good morning, Johnny. Doing great. I think we're both doing great, but I'll bet you, I know a company that's not doing great, and that's called Dean Food, which uh, is America's largest milk producer, or has been for so many years, like 94 years, it's been really, really famous and successful, but recently it's been struggling. Why? According to CNN Business, it is basically because Americans are drinking less cow's milk. In 2019, the company tumbled 7% in the first half of the year and profit fell 14%. Its stock, Dean Foods, DF is the symbol, lost 80% that year. That is not good, right, for a business? No, I wouldn't think so. So, here's the, it produced things, very famous ones, you know, True Moo, Dairy Pure, and Land of Lake Milks, and it has blamed its struggles, according to this article, on the accelerated des- decline in the conventional white milk category. It also has distributed uh, some milk for Organic Valley through a joint venture. But anyway, it owns a, a lot of uh, recognizable brands. Another one is Dairy Pure. And the co- but the company saddled with debt is, and can't fund anything, can fund its workers' pensions. So it filed for Chapter 11 recently. And uh, he wanted to stay operating for a while. And now it's working with the Dairy Farmers of America Cooperative to maybe sell all of its assets there. And uh, it seems to be moving along. And so uh, they're keeping the company running to an extent. Well, this says to me that something has changed in our culture about milk. And we've talked about the problems with milk, haven't we, Doc? Repeatedly. And it's a topic worth repeating. Because there's always new information about the problems with milk. You know how you always say that that a lot of these problems, they can't be really solved so much by government, but they can be solved by uh, consumer demand. Yeah, the pocketbook. You know, people vote with their wallets. Well, I'm going to quote from this. It says, Once a stable of the American refrigerator, milk has slowly fallen out of favor with consumers as they seek less sugary or plant-based alternatives. The global market for milk alternatives is expected to top $18 billion this year, up 3.5% of 2018, according to Euromonitor. There's still a, f- a fraction of the traditional milk market, market will, will, which will come in just under $120 billion globally this year. Responding to these facts, which have been almost purely generated by consumer demand, Dr. Rodier brought up the recent 30th anniversary of the Velvet Revolution in the former Czechoslovakia. This was a bloodless revolution where people decided to stop consuming, to quit their jobs, to sell their small businesses, and force the communist leader to abdicate. For many years, cow's milk has been the queen of the milk industry, although there were a few up-and-coming competitors. But now there is a full-scale revolution, and the queen seems to be thinking of abdicating her supreme role. The consumer is now controlling most of the supply and demand for milk. The other factor besides Americans who choose alternative milk products for health and aesthetic reasons is based on actual lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance is a major condition affecting American citizens coming from non-European cultures, whose demographics are now more significant for consumer consumption in America. Here's one of the very upcoming competitors for consumer interest in alternative milk products. If you live in the United States, then you know that in the last year or two, the oat milk brand Oatly has blown up. And the crazy thing is that oat milk has been around since the 1990s. And it was only in 2016 that the Swedish based manufacturer of Oatly decided to enter the US market which makes sense because there's a clear demand for alternative milk. I personally religiously order almond milk myself, so I understand, you know, what's happening there, but the interesting thing is that like how they went about, you know, penetrating the US market from a marketing perspective. Now there was two distinctive parts of their strategy, and that's what I want to share with you guys in this video because that helped them explode from 1.5 million in sales to $15 million in just two years. So what they did to enter the market is that they tapped into influencers in the sense of baristas. They went to coffee shops and they presented their alternative milk to these baristas because it had a neutral flavor when making lattes, and they understood that they were the gatekeepers for alternative milk to introduce it to potential consumers because if you yourself walked into a starbucks or a blue bottle and a barista said hey you know would you like to try oat milk 
and you never even heard of oat milk, you'd probably say, sure, not everyone would necessarily try it, but a good majority would be you know, willing and open enough to try oat milk to then be surprised by the amazing taste and, and how well it blends with a latte. And then in little to no time, they'll find themselves at a Whole Foods or at a Trader Joe's potentially looking for oat milk, maybe even that specific brand, which is Oatly in the scenario. And I think that really speaks to the effectiveness of influencer advertising in campaigns that are top funnel awareness where you're trying to introduce something new because you can levitate to that gravitas of trust that an influencer, someone that you trust brings to this situation. In this particular case, it being oat milk, but also the thing that they did was that they slowly started to introduce this to selective grocery stores. So it wasn't rolled out mass market in the beginning. Now it's that Oatly is expanding to over 5,000 different convenience stores, but they clearly started with the important people in the process, which was your coffee and what could make it taste better. In the show, we also analyze the value of various alternatives to cow's milk, almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, coconut milk, etc. These products all have their own special nutrients, and for some, their pluses and minuses. So, what should we think about milk? Back in the 1950s, we were happy that somebody knew. I'll get him here. Joey, I need a little break and a pickup. Come on over and join me. And the most refreshing picker-upper I know. Good Borden's milk. Mmm, that's good. If it's Borden's, it's got to be good. And good for you, too. I'm gonna try again. Hey, Joey. You wanna try for this? Hot diggity, I got it. Why don't you ask your mom to open plenty of good Borden's milk for you? With your cookies, your sandwiches, all your meals. It's wonderful. Tell her it's the only milk we drink. Hey, Mom! Be sure to buy Borden's. Buy Borden's. 